November 8th, Juliet Foxtrot Juliet. November 8th, uh, Juliet Foxtrot, what was the rest? Foxtrot, what was the rest? Juliet Foxtrot Juliet. Yes, sir, what's the name there, please? Yes, sir, what's the name there, please? Ah, uh, John. Hi, right, John, and uh, what radio are you running, sir? John, and uh, what radio are you running, sir? Okay, it's a Yesu FT-900. Yesu FT-900, uh, Roger. FT-900, uh, Roger. Roger, Roger. All right, John, where are you located, sir? Where are you located, sir? We are in Michigan. All right, John, and uh, tell me uh, in 10 or 15 seconds about your antenna system. Seconds about your antenna system. Okay, I have a gap. Titan. Thirteen feet above ground at the base. Copy. Uh, Roger that. Uh, trying to look at your audio and... Uh, the thing is, um, you know, when we're talking about dynamic range, uh, it involves uh, two things. It involves a rate of speech and uh, the uh, dynamics of the words that you speak. And if you are talking very slowly, it's hard to get uh, comprehension as far as what your dynamic range may be because the words are not close enough together to see how far they fall down between word to word. When you uh, speak hesitantly, then it is very difficult to see what your dynamic range is. So, if well, maybe we could just speak a little bit faster, I could uh, uh, be able to evaluate what your uh, dynamic range is. Roger? Speak. That's pretty good there. Now, if you could do that for about 15 seconds, I could be very comprehensive about what your modulation, average uh, peak modulation is. Average uh, peak modulation is. Okay, this is NHJFJ testing. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes, sir. Now, your dynamic range looks to be about 3 dB, but your equalization is very uh, upper mids. You have no uh, bottom end at all. And uh, so it uh, kind of is like um, a very, um, just, a, you know, very mid rangey I would suggest maybe uh, that you try to uh, broaden your, your EQ uh, curve just a little bit by um, uh, maybe uh, putting in a, a little bit more low frequencies. Normally, you know, um, I'm, I'm on the other end of it, but uh, your case, uh, you are almost all mid-range with no bottoms. So I would say, uh, what kind of uh, EQ do you have on that radio? EQ do you have on that radio? Uh, that I do not know. Okay, well, close enough. <laughs> uh, I would suggest that you consult with your, your owner's uh, manual, and uh, when you find out where your EQ is, I would go down to a if it's a three-band EQ, I would uh, punch up the bottom EQ, the low frequency EQ, uh, about uh, three clicks. I would advance the low, if it's a three-band EQ, I would advance the low end about three clicks, Roger. About three clicks, Roger. Okay, does that have anything to do with mic gain? No, no, mic gain is uh, the volume. We're talking about the shape of the audio curve. In other words, uh, as I'm listening to you, I'm looking at your audio on a spectrum analyzer, and it's telling me what your, you know, what uh, the frequencies that are involved in your uh, audio system as you speak, and uh, it's all in the upper mids uh, with no bottom end. So what I'm just suggesting is that you broaden your your audio out just a little bit and make it sound a little f more full by adding some uh, low frequency response. So. So, you know, if, when you find out where your equalization is, uh, just uh, advance, if it's a three band, just advance that bottom uh, low frequency by uh, three clicks or so at least, Roger. Clicks or so at least, Roger. Okay, I don't see anything on this radio to do that. Uh, probably uh, 
there's a possibility uh, if we take the cover off and uh, uh, look inside there, there may be something. But like you said, uh, it's probably a matter of consulting the owner's manual Go ahead, or operating manual. Go ahead. Yes, sir. That's a, that's a good clue. That's that's uh, what I would suggest is uh, that you consult the uh, owner's manual or Google. Google knows all. And if you don't have an owner's manual, just uh, consult uh, Google for that uh, model radio, and they'll, you'll probably be able to get download a PDF file on that radio. How old is that radio? On that radio. How old is that radio? Oh, I'm going to say probably uh, 25, 30 years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, it well could not have an equalization, you know. Uh, you know, but uh, you need the owner's manual. Uh, that has so much information that uh, will tell you exactly uh, what it does and doesn't have. And, uh, you know, there are other ways to, uh, uh, to make things work. You know, you can add uh, outboard. If, if you're married to that radio, then you can add outboard stuff to make it do exactly what you need it to do that you do not have internally. You can uh, run, uh, uh, you know, a, a condenser microphone with a, a, a preamp, and then you can have a, a, a outboard EQ that uh, will help that radio, uh, you know, sound a million dollars, or uh, you could change mics. Uh, what mic are you running now? Mics, uh, what mic are you running now? Okay, bear with me while I take a look at it. It's uh, it's it's the stock mic that came with it. Uh, let me see if I can read the small print. Go ahead. I know what you mean. Uh, that's a hand mic. You mean uh, that's a hand mic? Uh, uh, Roger. Roger. Well, you know, notoriously, uh, uh, most hand mics are uh, kind of uh, upper mids. Uh, except for like the uh, 7300 or the uh, 7610, which are using electret microphone hand mics for stock, and that radio, those radios just sound beautiful with the uh, with the uh, stock hand mic. Now the older radios, uh, yours probably has what's called a dynamic microphone as opposed to an electret microphone, so it further uh, makes it uh, more tinny than uh, you know whatever, but. Uh, you, sometimes you, there's a thing called uh, proximity to microphone. I don't know if you know exactly what that means, but uh, the thing is, is expressed by the closer that you work a microphone, the more intense the bottom end uh, of the frequency response will be. So, uh, you know, you can actually do your own EQ without uh, electronics. Uh, you, you know, by just working that microphone right up in that microphone touching that microphone and uh, let me let me hear that and uh, let me let me hear that okay uh, I did the best I could to uh, uh, multitask here uh, it looks like this might be an MN31 MN31 Roger Yes, sir. So probably that is a dynamic microphone. So what I want you to uh, do an experiment for me. I want you to bring that microphone right up uh, uh, and speak right into it as you're actually touching that microphone with your lips and uh, talk and let me hear it that way. And uh, talk and let me hear it that way. Okay, I'm doing it now. How about this? Uh, just a little bit more, sir. Uh, just a little bit more, sir. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. All right. Uh, now, I think we're uh, increased our bottom end, but what? <laughs> the next question is: You have? Do you know where your mic gain control is? Your mic gain control is. I've got it sitting at about nine o'clock. Go ahead. All right. Uh, just uh, again, you you know, as far as what I could hear, your uh, bottom end came up quite a bit when you uh, went uh, closer to microphone, but the volume went up also. So what we want to do is turn the volume down and uh, continue to work uh, close. Uh, working close, Mike, is that uncomfortable for you? Mike, is that uncomfortable for you? Not at all. How is this? 
Yes, sir. Now, uh, tell me of something in about ten seconds, uh, and uh, let me uh, let me hear you. Uh, let me uh, let me hear you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yeah, I would run it. I would run it just like that if that's comfortable for you. I, because it, uh, again, the proximity effect uh, of the microphone helps the bottom end as you move up on it. And now that we've turned the volume down, uh, your your level is about the same as what it was, but it has, uh, you know, you're more multi frequency than where you were, Roger. Frequency than where you were, Roger. Now that's indeed quite interesting. What's the name there? Name here is Jim Juliet India Mike. Our call is uh, Kilo Charlie Nine Victor. Kilo Victor. We're located uh, just across the uh, Ohio River from Louisville, Kentucky. We're on the Indiana side of the Ohio River, right at Louisville. The Ohio River, right at Louisville. Well, that's quite interesting, there, Jim. Uh, I'm retired military. Uh, my dad was once stationed at Fort Knox. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did he? It was he the one that left with all the gold? He the one that left with all the gold. Uh, say that again. We had a, some static crash. Yeah, I said, uh, was he the one that left with all the Fort Knox gold? The Fort Knox gold? I, I'm kind of doubting. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, I know that there is no gold in Fort Knox. I mean, you know, they used to have a, a, a thousand tanks out there, you know, which I figured they were all guarding the money. But uh, somehow something happened and all the tanks are gone except this one tank that uh, is out there as you just go into Fort Knox and it's, uh, it's up on a pedestal. looks like it hasn't run in 30 years. So I know there's, you know, it's not guarding anything and I, I know all that gold is gone. No, know all that gold is gone. Well, that's been gone about that length of time, so I kind of got my doubts that that's what he's doing. Go ahead. Uh, Roger that, Roger. That. I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know where that, that those guys went. Uh, probably to uh, another base uh, in Kentucky. I think it was. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, <laughs> it, it used to be kind of interesting because uh, uh, you know they get those uh, those tank guns going. Uh, you know, two or three o'clock in the morning on maneuvers, and man, I'm I'm uh, 30 miles away, but I could I could hear the roar of the cannons, Roger. The roar of the cannons, Roger. I don't doubt that a bit. Uh, I, I can remember from my childhood when uh, Dad was there at Fort Knox doing his duty. He lived in a little town called Mitchell. And uh, I could hear, as well as the other members of the family and neighbors, that's exactly what you're talking about. Go ahead. Roger, Roger. Well, John, uh, gosh, I think we've done all the damage we can do at the moment. <laughs> if you get a chance, uh, join us next Friday and we'll uh, figure out something else to do, Roger. Figure out something else to do, Roger. Okay, Jim, I'm quite certain I have spoken with you before using my other radio which is an MPCS 1200. Go ahead. Roger. Well, gosh, uh, I have to consult my notes, uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, I've just gone through some of my notes as far as uh, what radios we've set up. You know, and the thing is, uh, we have uh, developed this very generic um, setup procedure that, uh, you know, we can take almost any radio and set it up uh, to uh, perfection, um, you know, and uh, it uh, just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to go through back and see how many 7300s that I've set up, and I think there's something along 200 or, or 220 uh, 7300s that we've set up, Roger. Hundreds that we've set up, Roger. Okay, Jim, have you ever done a 991? Uh, no, but uh, I've, I've got a plan if you've got the radio. got a plan if you've got the radio. I know somebody that does. 
Well, uh, it would be very similar, you know, as to your setup. It would be exactly identical to your setup. Tell them to put their uh, compressor on a 3, and then uh, go to the AOC and adjust their mic level for mid-scale to two-thirds, and uh, they'll, be, uh, they'll be sounding like you, Roger. They'll be sounding like you, Roger. Okay, well, I very much appreciate all the help there, Jim. Roger, my pleasure, sir. And uh, let me say threes to you. And uh, again, if you get a chance, join us next uh, next Friday. And in between then, if you want to hear your audio, go to YouTube. Do that call letter search, KC9VKV. Look for a CUSO entitled My Group Air Check 82120. Today's date, 82120 My Group Air Check. Roger. 2120 My Group Air Check. Roger. Okay, I, I think uh, I stepped on you. A little bit there, Jim. Uh, so I, I got the thing about the uh, 81 times 20 and uh, my check, I believe it was. Go ahead. Yeah, the the reference uh, to numbers is the date. Today's date, 8-21-20, today's date. And it's uh, called My Group as a Party. My Party Air Check, My Group Air Check, Roger. Air Check, My Group Air Check, Roger. Roger, Roger, that's correct. And uh, also, uh, keep in mind, now that you're working that microphone tight, you're not working it like you were, uh, but you're working it tight. So just just remember that, Roger. Just just remember that, Roger. Oh, I, I certainly won't forget that. Uh, you only need to tell me once. Go ahead. <laughs> Roger, Roger, John. Please to you, sir. You have a good afternoon. Uh, this is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlognet. Uh, if you've got a radio you want to check out, give me a shout.